Keep your heads up and your arms covered, beautiful family in Jesus Christ forever. It's 9-11, and here's the verse of the day. And it's the perfect verse for today. Matthew 24, 42. Watch therefore, for ye know not the hour your Lord doth come. And then our first love, our forever love, touched on it again in the last book of the Bible. Revelation 3, 3. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. So we're watching and we're pushing. We're trying to push the child out. So I'm laboring for him, for us, for you, family. And all glory to our Father, in the name above every name, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. I received over 500 requests for the Rapture Awareness Flyer. And last night I got down to 57 emails left. And I want to apologize right now. I'm sorry if I made it quick if I responded or I didn't respond. I'm trying to get through these as fast as I can so our Father could put these flyers in your hands now. So I'm multitasking for Jesus Christ. And I've been praying for extra oil so I could shine bright for everyone and encourage us all as we see the day approaching. And Jesus Christ is telling me to do today's video and then get offline until the Feast of Trumpets is confirmed, the new moon over Jerusalem. And when the trumpets start blowing, he wants me to come back. And I would love to spend more time with you right now, but praise God, we have eternity, family. If it's important, please reach out to me again. And if we're still here, I'll come back and verify the new moon time. But we should all be expecting him right now because this is the biggest watch we've ever seen in our whole entire lives. But if we go past September, we won't be going very far. Here's a couple reasons why this is the biggest watch of our lives. And it's Daniel 9.27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for seven years. Agenda 2030. On September 18th and 19th, they will be confirming the seven-year covenant with many. And there's 17 goals, and one of them is peace. And here's another reason why. 1 Thessalonians 5, 3, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Well, on the 19th, the woman will be clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And she being with child cried in pain to be delivered. And I've been walking you through the signs. And if we're still here on September 21st, here's another reason. Because it's the International Day of Peace for the United Nations. And what he's telling us either way is we're going home immediately. And it could be this month. And again, this is the biggest sign we've ever seen in the heavens. And the convergence is gigantinormous. It looks like we're leaving very quickly this month. And either way, I've told you, the Holy Spirit told me, finding the day of the rapture is not what's important. What's important is what we do until that day. So regardless what happens, I'm going to keep pushing until that child comes out and we go home. But I'm about to show you right here on CBN. And this article came out on St. Patrick's Day this year. I'm about to show you that the seven-year tribulation is going to start immediately. And as you can see right here, it says Mount of Olives, Jerusalem, Israel. Last September, five red heifers arrived in Israel. The heifers are now in a secure, undisclosed location in Israel. And remember, this article came out on St. Patrick's Day, and it says the red heifers are now between one and a half and two years old. So that means that they're over two years old now. And to replicate the ceremony mentioned in the Bible, they need to be at least three years old without any blemishes. They have to be perfect. And if they turn four, they're too old and they'll be disqualified. And it says that they believe that it's very likely that the ceremony would happen somewhere in the area of Passover 2024. 
And Passover 2024 is right around the corner, family, six or seven months away. And right after that, it says out to the possibility of Shabbat. So what they're saying is the farthest that they'll push this red heifer sacrifice is to Pentecost next year. And as soon as they sacrifice this red heifer on the Mount of Olives, they're going to rush the daily sacrifices of the lambs. But Jesus Christ was the final sacrifice. But the point is, we're going home. And yeah, there's a partial blood moon eclipse on Purim next year. And on the Torah calendar, they have it marked as Passover. And yeah, on April 8th next year, the great American solar eclipse comes back through America and makes an X, marking little Egypt and blatantly marking the plagues of Exodus and tribulation. But neither one of those signs even come close. Actually, in my eyes, they're nothing compared to this Revelation 12 sign and what we're seeing right now with the comet Nishimura. Discovered on 8-11 this year. Headed straight for the star Gale, that means Wormwood, that was discovered in 1953 on 8-11. Exactly 70 years before Nishimura was discovered. And remember, Habakkuk 2-3 for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Well, now ask yourself, does that sound like the Revelation 12 sign? On the same day they're doing a seven-year covenant with many? Does that sound like the convergence that we're having right now? In verse 2, the verse before that. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Well, that's what he has us doing, family. He has us printing the vision to put on tables. And I'm being filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise you, Father, in your name, Jesus Christ. Does that sound like the partial blood moon eclipse next year? Or does that sound like the great American solar eclipse that's coming back through America? Does that sound like the appointed time that's going to speak? Or does that sound like right now? And I can only share what he's giving me, family. And he doesn't want you looking to me. He wants you looking to him. He wants you running to him. He will give you confirmation. We are in the very last days and he's pouring his spirit upon all flesh. Brothers and sisters that aren't even watching are having visions and dreams now. And it's written, you already know, what he wants us to do is shine bright and expect him. And run hard. And if we keep pushing and running hard until he comes, we'll finish the race strong. And blessed are those who give meat in due season when he comes. Now on to the signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, right where Jesus Christ said they would be, and they are. Because the vision is for an appointed time, and it shall speak and not lie. And here's the truth. He has kept this sign biblical. And when he showed me Leah Marie, I almost didn't use it. Because it wasn't just Leah. And I felt him tell me it's okay because Marie means Mary. And Mary has to do with the birth. And here's the truth. He showed me Elijah and Moses with names just like this. I don't want to stretch the truth. I will not compromise. So I didn't use them. And then Daniel, our brother, praise God for him. He found one of them. And he showed me. And I was like, yeah, but it has another name on it. So I'm not going to use it. And then the night before last, a brother emailed me and told me this. And I still felt like, well, it's kind of a reach and it's kind of a stretch. So I'm just not going to use it. I feel like the picture is complete. Then yesterday I read a comment and a sister said, did you know that Elijah and Moses are both in the scale on the Revelation 12 sign. So since we're the body of Christ, I felt like Jesus was telling me, he was nudging me to use the two witnesses in the picture. They're there, family, Moses and Elijah. 
the same ones that were there when Jesus Christ was transfigured. So I told Jesus, if those names attached to Elijah and Moses are powerful, I'll put them in the picture. So I looked up Mendel, and I was blown away because the meaning is comforter. The exact same thing that the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is. The comforter, the truth, and our helper. That's who he is. He's the comforter. So that blew me away. And I looked down and it says wisdom or learning. So I was like, okay, check. I hear you, Jesus Christ. I'm going to look up Mina now. And in the Bible, Mina, it means a weight containing 50 shekels. And remember, a jubilee is 50 years. And remember, Elijah and Moses are in the scale. So I was completely blown away. Like, yes, you're telling me to put these in the picture. And then Strong's Concordance popped up for Mina. And the definition is to number, reckon. And I was like, wow, Jesus Christ, that's off the charts. And I looked down and it says, appoint, appointed, numbered. So I scrolled down and it's right here. The verb is number, reckon, see biblical Hebrew. And right under that, God has numbered the days of thy kingdom, i.e. put an end to it. And underneath that, Strong's exhaustive concordance, it means number, ordain, set. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. The day is set. It's appointed. He's telling us this. I got the Holy Spirit all over me. Praise you, Father. The two witnesses are now a part of the picture, family. They're going into the scale when Bera, which means faith, is leaving the scale. And immediately after that, I checked an email and a sister said that there was a star named Mikkel and it mean Michael. And I had seen it, but I felt the Holy Spirit said, look up Michael again. So I did. And right next to Jeremiah is Michael James, James, the brother of John. So I felt led to put that on the picture. And then I felt led to look up the other main angels, Raphael. And right next to the sun, right above Michael James, is Raphaelta. And I'm looking up Raphaelta Bible meaning for the first time while I'm recording the video right now, family. And obviously, Raphael's going to pop up and it says, God has healed. What does the Bible say about the angel Raphael? I am Raphael, one of the seven holy angels which present the prayers of the saints and which go in and out before the glory of the Holy One. And now I just looked up Raphaelta, name meaning, and it says Spanish and Portuguese version of Hebrew, Raphaela, God has healed. Hebrew meaning, God has healed. And he's healing our hearts. And in one of these recent videos, I told you I'm in severe pain. Well, it's not because I'm injured or sick. It's because I'm broken hearted. The pain I'm talking about is heart pain. Because my favorite human being, my awesome, beautiful wife, Christina, escaped last year. And I'm very grateful that he took her. And I praise him for it every day. But my heart is still shattered. The love that radiates through me is strictly coming from the Holy Spirit. But I want you to know, since we're still here, he's not done with us yet. And even though I'm in pain and my heart hurts like it's never hurt before, and I'm still adjusting to Christina not being here, nothing or no one can stop me from being fruitful for Jesus Christ until we leave, only him. So all glory to our Father in the name above every name, Jesus Christ. When I go out, I'm going up, swinging the sword. And every time the devil hits me, I hit him back ten times harder. Jesus Christ gave us all power over the enemy. We have to know our position. Do not be scared of the devil. 
Don't be rude to him. Don't call him names. Do what Jesus Christ did and hit him with the sword. He will flee. Then tell him the Lord rebuked you. Get behind me and keep pushing. He can't do nothing unless Jesus Christ allows it. And this baby's coming out, the child, whether he likes it or not. This is war, family. We must endure as good soldiers for Jesus Christ until the end, until he comes and gets us, until the end of the tribulation that leads to the last seven years of tribulation. A closed mouth don't get fed. Jesus Christ told you, ask and ye shall receive. So ask him to cancel all plans of the enemy. Ask him to rise you above the ashes. Ask him to use you in a mighty way in the last days. And if the devil has robbed you and caused all kinds of problems in your life, now's the time to fight fire with the Holy Spirit fire. Hit him with the sword. Any chance you get when the father of lies starts telling you lies, hit him with the sword, the word, and straight up tell him all things work out for the good for those who love the Lord and are here according to his purpose. And soon you'll be under my feet and tell him his day's coming. He'll be thrown into the lake of fire for eternity. Tell him his days are numbered. Tell them that you come in the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ. This is spiritual warfare. Armor up and go to war. And I told you, he's telling me to get offline and strengthen my heart and spend time with him and hit the streets and feed the lesser of the brethren. And he knows I love you. So I'll be back, family, if we're still here when they confirm the new moon. So after Michael and Raphael, I looked up Gabriel. And Gabriella is right there, underneath Miriam, right next to Levi. And that shooting star, asteroid, minor planet, whatever they want to call it, Levi, it's not actually Levi, it's just representing Levi, like all these signs. This is God painting his picture, and the heavens declare the glory of God. So I looked up Gabriella, and it's a female version of Gabriel, devoted to God in Hebrew. Gabriella is the Italian girl's version of the boy's name, Gabriel, devoted to God. And when you look up Gabriella Bible meaning, Gabriella is a feminine name of the Spanish and Italian origin, meaning God is my strength or a hero of God. Well, that's Jesus Christ. He is our hero. He paid the price. He loves us unconditionally. He's got our backs. He just wants us to come to him, run to him. Just like you want your kid. If you have kids, when something goes wrong with them, you want them to come to you. Well, he's the father and he wants us to run to him. He wants us to lean on him. He wants us to cast all of our burdens upon him and take his yoke upon us for his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Praise you, Father, for your Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. He's coming to get us. Romans 8, 11, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. And there's no drugs or alcohol or anything else in this whole world that you could possibly do that feels better than the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is God. Jesus Christ. And he's coming immediately. And it's our job to answer the call. And I'll share one more star with you that I was going to not put in the picture. But... A sister reached out to our brother Daniel this morning, all glory to our father in your name, Jesus Christ. And when Daniel told me, I knew that I was supposed to put this in there. He wants this message out. And it's right there next to Galilee, Jonah Butler. And I know he wants this out because right before I started recording, I said, all right, Jesus Christ, give me the right spot. 
and I opened the Bible straight to the book of Jonah. I would never lie to you, family. This is 100% true. And instantly, when you think of butler, you think of a servant, a butler. And that's what Jonah was. And if you remember, God told him to go warn Nineveh. But he didn't care for those people, so he didn't do it at first. Matthew 26, 29. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. And when you look up Butler Bible meaning, properly a servant in charge of the wine. Butler in the Bible, the term butler is used in the Joseph story. But cupbearer is used of the Solomon's officials and is the term in Nehemiah's writings. It's Strong's Bible Concordance 4945 and the definition is butler, cupbearer. And our father has many of us working in different areas, but it's all for his perfection and his glory. And I don't use gematria, but I know Daniel does and he has for a very long time. But what I do know is when the spirit prompts me, and today, for the third time, I heard the Spirit tell me to ask Daniel what would be in Gematria. And as you can see right there, Rapture Awareness Flyer in English Gematria equals 1620. Well, here's what's gigantic, enormous, all glory to you, Father, in the name above every name, Jesus Christ. 2023 is also 1620. And when he showed it to me, I was like, wow, that's amazing. And Daniel said, wait till you see what strong 1620 is, bro. I almost cried. And right when I looked up 1620, as he's telling me what it means, I got blown up with the Holy Spirit. And I almost cried. Because it means exactly what he's been having me do, family. The definition is to set forth, to declare usage I put out or expose a child. I set forth, expound, explain. I put out or expose a child, family. And she being with child cried in pain to be delivered. Rapture awareness flyer, 1620. 2023, 1620. Strong's Bible Concordance, 1620. I put out or expose a child. And she being with child cried in pain to be delivered. All glory to our Father in the name above every name, Jesus Christ. He put these in your hands. You're printing them up. We're hitting the streets. And thank you, family. I have more tents than I've ever had. I'm going to hit the streets hard. Hopefully a few cities. And hopefully he comes this month and takes us home. That's what it looks like he's screaming out to us and saying. So ask him to give you the strength to finish the race strong. And until he comes like lightning from the east to the west, keep looking up for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ.